المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت, إذا شئت سهلا إن شاء الله respected brothers and sisters in Islam today we're going to talk about a small surah in the Quran and in that small surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained the reality of the person who's not satisfied with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's not satisfied with the qada of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who's not satisfied with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what he has proportioned and gave him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade hasad forbade al-hamz wal-lamz Al-ghiba wa namima in jealousy and envy. Why is that? Because the reality of the person and the heart of the person has to be muqtani' meaning have qana'a, content with, uh, with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. If not, he turns to what? To hasad. To envy, to hums, to lums, to jinx, to say, look what he's got. And then, after the hasad, he's not even satisfied, it gets worse. What it gets to? Backbiting and slander the person. And he start fabricating things. And saying things which is, are not true about the person. Why? It is all as a result of not being satisfied with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chosen for the person. Why would someone talk about you behind your back? Why would someone backbite you behind your back? Except that he has hatred inside his heart towards you. Tabwa bring that hatred. He's not satisfied that you are better or you've done things. He's not satisfied that you've done better than him. Or he's not satisfied that you have made the decisions that you made. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving you money. Or giving you righteousness. Or giving you a better life. The person says, with his height, Ahmad is no good. Why Ahmad is no good? Well, he, uh, he's got a long nose. They, Allah created him like that. Ahmad is no good, he's a thief. But how do you know he's a thief? How did you know he is stealing money? Allah, he cheats. But how did you know? You have a proof? No, the only thing, but Allah gave you money more than him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have given you popularity more than him. Zah, he's a fame seeker. But why? Wallahi, uh, if he acts, he's a fame seeker. What is the dalil? Did you read what's in his heart? Of course, you didn't read what's in his heart. Then how do you base your decision? You base the decision about misconceptions everywhere, so you can, huh? So you can talk about him, and then you fall into what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala forbade. Of course, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in Surah Al Humaza, when He says "Wa'ilun li kulli Humaza lumaza," He is describing for you the reality of a person who loves money. Who loves this dunya and he thinks he's going to live in this dunya forever. You say, but no one believes that he's going to live forever. You'll see that the surah described this personality. Ya akhwa, the Quran, the Quran, all of it, in many ayat, every way, describes the reality of a human being. There is no better book that describes the reality of a human being, what he thinks, his thoughts, what's in his heart better than the Quran. 
Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you and He knows مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسَكْ What's inside of you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you and He knows the waswas what your nafs whisper to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows you and He knows what your nafs whispers to you. Hence, He treated it and He revealed the Qur'an according to that. And that's why when He told you about the person who's hoarding money and wealth and who's not happy with anyone, he believes in his actions, he's going to live forever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing in this small surah a sick mentality. A person who's sick, that you will never be able to satisfy. You cannot ever make him happy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ Woe to every slander, backbiter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he said wail, some ulama said, it's a valley in Jahannam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created valley in Jahannam where there are poisonous spiders that made for the person who have this attribute. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that in another surah, وَيْلٌ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ So wail is repeated regularly in the Qur'an. But the minimum of it is what? Is a threat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَيْلٌ لِكُلِّ هُمَزَةٍ لُمَزَةٍ The ulama went in many different uh, opinions about the what is Al-Wail uh, and uh, Al-Humaza and Al-Numaza. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَلْمِزُكَ فِي الصَّدَقَاتِ And some of them who do lambs to you, in the arms, in the charity. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as soon as he turns his back, they start slandering the Prophet ﷺ and by backbiting the Prophet ﷺ about the sadaqah that he, the way he distributes sadaqah and the way he receives sadaqah ﷺ. And this is a lesson for you, Akhi, that when you're going to involve yourself in the work of da'wah and the deen, and you're going to enter the masajid and talk and work in the Islamic community, you're not going to be saved from the backbiting and the slander. It's normal. Why it's normal? Because if Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was not safe and protected from it, what makes you a person who's going to be safe and protected from it? Even in the sadaqat, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa used to give, people were not happy. A man came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and grabbed him from his shirt. And he grabbed him towards him until you could see the redness on the Prophet Sallallahu neck. He said, I'dil ya Rasulullah. Be just a Rasulullah. Yani Muhammad Sallallahu is not just. The Prophet Sallallahu <coughs> said to him, Why hak? Woe to you. If I am not just, who is then just? Sah. Another person came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah, give me not from your wealth, nor your, from your parents' wealth. If someone comes to you and does this to you, he'll walk out without any front teeth. Sah? Tayyib, here the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, يَخْرُجُ مِنْ ضُؤْضُئِ هَذَا الرَّجُلُ From the loins of this man, من، which is the خوارج، تحقرون يعني you belittle your صلاة to their صلاة، and they will read the Quran it does not pass their throat. Why? Because of the rudeness of this man towards the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. So if the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم not saved from this criticism, who is then saved? 
ويل لكل همزه لمزه الهمزه اند اللمزه از ست يدعو لها ما ديفرد بات ات از ذا باك بايتنج اند سلندر سم علماء سد الهمز از فيشل اكسبريشن اجينست سم ون اتس لايك وين يو um uh, 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 wink with your eye or you do expression belittling someone sah and the second one is the actual saying which you are backbiting and slandering someone but in everything we read about the meaning you find them it revolve around three meaning backbiting slander or doing actions that are actions of backbiting and slander of course the slanderous person and the one who backbites or the one who does actions behind the back of a person is considered to be what coward with the capital c why is that because if he's a man he'll talk to you in front of you but because he's not a man he talks what behind your back sah the proper man he comes come here ya akhi wallah i see this 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 is a problem but the sick person the sick personality what does he do he talks behind your back why because he is coward and loves the dunya and loves his own benefit and selfish and he does not love anyone else except himself when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said inna ad-din an-nasiha indeed the deen is what is a nasiha sah lillahi wa li rasulihi and so on the hadith the the deen is advice advice nasiha but when it is to allah meaning to follow the deen of allah and the messenger is to follow the messenger and to the book of allah is to follow the book of allah and to the ummah al muslimin to the leaders of the muslimin is to advise them in the haq and to the ummah to your brothers and sisters of the muslims to do what to talk to them about the wrongs they are doing and they can correct it not you don't go behind their back and hums and lums but you see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the in the, in the following verse he'll tell you how this person is alladhi jama'a malan wa'addada what did he do he holds money and he counts it who is the one who holds money and he counts it and he loves the wealth of course mal means wealth not money cash no wealth he's in love with his money with his wealth all his aim is how much he can save money or everything that he wants from this life is to mount mountains and mountains of wealth of course by nature people love what by money وتحبون المال حبا جما ان يو لاف ماني ويث لوتس اوف لاف ذا بيرسون انسايد هيز هارت زين للناس حب الشهوات من النساء والبنين والقناطير المقنطره من الذهب والفضه والانعام والانعام والخيل المسومه والانعام والحرف ذلك متاع الحياه الدنيا ات از بين ديكوريتد فور ذا بيبل ذا لاف اوف وات women and children and mountains of gold and silver it is by nature but the person who is a miser he does not like to give anyone anything his most beautiful dream the best time is when he sits with his cash and he said bismillah zidi and he hides them and he says to the dollar when it comes to his pocket he says sleep peacefully may never may, may, may never anyone wakes you up you come to this pocket i can promise you you never ever going to see daylight in your life sah so, he 
his best dream is to look at his bank account and say, Subhanaka wa bihamdik. Sah? He loves it. Jama, mal, mal. But where are you going with it? Where are you going with it? He come, his brother comes to him, Can you lend me $10,000? Wallahi, my wife, she wants to have an operation. Akhi, wallahi, I'm broke. I'm broke. He doesn't look you in the eye, he looks down, you know why? He doesn't look you in the eye and say, I'm broke. He looks down, why? Because he knows he's a liar, he's not broke. I'm broke, wallahi, akhi. And he takes an oath, wallah, I'm broke. Shalom, inshallah, you are broke. Sah. Of course, this person, his action says that he wants to live forever. He does not give a sadaqa fi sabilillah. This is a person that his nafs is so sick that he lives for him self only. He never lives for others. Islam wants you to live for others, for the ummah. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, as sadaqatu burhan. The sadaqah is a proof. Proof of what? The sadaqah is a proof that you have iman in your heart. Why? Because everyone knows when he has the money and it is hoarded and it's piled up, that if I give you money, I expect some return. Sah. And if I invest, I expect return. And if I enter into a tijara, I expect returns. For me, I need some returns, some money back. But when you give to Allah, you can't see the return in front of you. Can you? He's hoping for what? For a return when? In the hereafter. So you have to have a strong iman in the hereafter so you can get the return. And there is a return in the dunya, which is you could get 10 times what you're given. You could, and you could get nothing. But the burhan is that that money, you get it in the hereafter. That is the burhan. As sadaqatu burhan. But the ones who hoard the money, not only he hoards it, all day he's sitting. <laughs> Check the um, stock exchange. Check the money market. Check it is how much the interest today. The real estate today. Financial review. Everything on the television. His mind is not his anymore. Even he comes to the masjid. Salat al Jum'ah. It's taking too long, the khatib. <laughs> Taken too long. He, he prays near the door as soon as the khatib says, Assalamu, he's in the car. <laughs> yeah, he waits. Yeah, he, the traffic and everyone gonna jam at the door to take the shoes. 20 minutes by the time I get it from here. Then the car, then the traffic and everyone beeps and it takes me one hour to get out. This way I can get out very quickly and go to the shop. So, he gets the money. So what do you do? I'm worried about when I can increase and how to save money. And he puts himself living in a hard life, a stressful life for what? No, only he collects my wealth because we all collect wealth. All of us, we collect. But no, this person is busy counting. And how I can be prosperous? What is the latest business venture? Well, business, ya ikhwa, supposed to be what for you? I mean, that you can get by to the hereafter. That's what it is. It's a mean you get by. It's a mean so you can find some comfort in this dunya and buy your akhirah with it. What you take with you is three. One of them is what? Continuous charity. But the one who hoards and counts the money and the wealth, he never thinks of a continuous charity. That's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the following ayah, anna He believes that his wealth is going to put him here forever. Because he's not doing anything 
that benefits him in the hereafter with that wealth. So as if that wealth to serve him in this dunya and lisanu halihi yaqul ana huna wa lastu dhahibun min huna. Yani we have in Arabic two things. Lisanu al-hali wa lisanu al-maqal. Lisanu al-maqal the tongue that you speak with. Lisanu al-hal which means actions speaking. Yani you say in English actions speak louder than words. So action that is the speech of your action. So even if he does not say I'm going to live here forever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said يحسب أن ما له أخلده He assumes, he believes that his wealth going to keep him for in this dunya for ever. What does it mean? It means ya ikhwa the lifestyle he lives, when you read his lifestyle, it tells you that he is as if he's staying cemented in this dunya and he's not leaving to the hereafter. Sah? And that is the nature of the person who worries about wealth and hoards wealth. And the people by nature love the people with money. Sah? Love to hang out and be with people who are wealthy. It's been narrated that Ali radiallahu anhu said, رَأَيْتُ النَّاسَ قَدْ ذَهَبُوا إِلَى مَنْ عِنْدَهُ ذَهَبُوا وَمَنْ لَا عِنْدَهُ ذَهَبُوا النَّاسُ عَنْهُ قَدْ ذَهَبُوا رَأَيْتُ النَّاسَ مُنْفَضَّةِ إِلَى مَنْ عِنْدَهُ فِضَّةِ وَمَنْ لَا عِنْدَهُ فِضَّةِ النَّاسُ عَنْهُ مُنْفَضَّةِ رَأَيْتُ النَّاسَ قَدْ مَالُوا إِلَى مَنْ عِنْدَهُ الْمَالُوا وَمَنْ لَا عِنْدَهُ مَالُوا النَّاسُ عَنْهُ قَدْ مَالُوا Translate. طيب. I saw the people ذَهَبُوا ذَهَبُوا in Arabic means went. To the one who has ذَهَب gold. And anyone who does not have gold, the people from him left. I saw the people have ran away to the person who have فَضَّة which is silver. And whomsoever has no فِضَّة silver, the people from him ran away. I saw what people have مَالُوا have turned to the one in the who مَالُوا to the one who has money. And whoever does not have money, the people have turned away from him. That is the nature of a humans. Human like to be around people who have wealth. So what? So they can get bit of wealth. But ya ikhwah, the people have wealth is like the hukam, the rulers. The more you turn to them, the more you fall into fitna. The more you try to live your life trying to be like them. And the more you are into fitna. And the more you start hating yourself. How is that? You start despising yourself. You see somebody, a millionaire, he's driving a Ferrari, he's your friend at university, and you're driving Datsun 100. You start looking down at yourself. I want to be like him. I want to have like him. Why he is and why he has wealth and I don't. Now you are complaining about the qadar of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his qada and you're falling into sin. Sah? If you say why he has money and I don't have that means, ma'ajibak qadiyatul qadar killa did not, qada al qadar did not come to your mind. That Allah, muqassim al arzaq. Allah is the one who proportions the wealth to people. As in the hadith al-Qudsi, that there are some slave of minds I know. Wealth could what? Could stray him away from the deen. And if Allah was to give him wealth, they will, but, they will what? They will turn away. And some people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows the best thing about them is to have money. If they don't have money, they could go astray from the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالْخَيْرِ وَالشَّرِّ What? No one memorized the ayah? Fitna. That will, we will strike you with the khair as a calamity, with the good, with the wealth, and with the evil, with the hardship as fitna. Sah? 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you this fitan in your life. To, to whether you are a sabur and you have patience or not. Sah. And the one who has money, as long as the money is in his hand, not in his heart, he is the successful one. He learns it from Uthman radiallahu anhu. He learns it from Abdul Rahman ibn Auf radiallahu anhu. And many other companions who had wealth, but they didn't spend their time counting it and worrying about it too much. Yes, they worked and they collected, but they gave the right of it. They gave the, sadaq, the zakat and the sadaqa and they would not cry for it if it goes because it's just another mean from the means of the dunya. As for the person, the miser, who believes that he's going to live forever, his case is what? Hoarding money, collecting money and counting it. Whatever wealth he can. And we said wealth is what? Could be cars. So. Four or five cars, what for? Allah, one for the weekend, one for the wife, one for the girlfriend, one for... One car is enough. If you have a big family, only one for your wife and one for yourself. And why, why you need three, four cars? So, that's wealth. So, three, four houses. And I'm talking, if you can afford it and you have the money, there's no problem. But if you're going to borrow from the bank and spend all your life trying to pay that loan and that loan and this haram and this halal and this riba and this. Sah. And all what you're worried about is your homes and your houses and you spend all your life chasing the money. You reach to 60 and when your beard grows white and your hair grows white and your grandson is a big man. Now we have we retired, we paid off the houses. Alhamdulillah, now we retire. Now we can come and worship Allah a couple of days a week. What happened to all these youth? Do you think Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants the house of Allah to be a retirement village? Yeah? Yani it's a it used to be back in the 60s, there was a retirement village. The retirees, they have enough sitting al ahwe drinking coffee and smoking hubbly bubbly. Then after he finishes, he comes for the salat and he sits till Maghrib Aisha and he goes home and wake up in the morning, uh, prays Fajr the Masjid and then he, he goes for breakfast and then come back, he'll have with his mates and the Masjid is a retirement village. Nah, no, Habibi. The Masjids have to be full of Shabab and full of retirees and full of women and full of everyone. This is the house of Allah. This is where we need to understand that your life is for Allah. He given it to you and live it for Him. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they say, يَحْسَبُ أَنَّ مَا لَهُ أَخْلَدَهُ He lives his life with his wealth as if he's going to stay in this world forever. He does not build the grave. He does not build the house in the hereafter. He does not build Masajid Allah so Allah can build him house in the hereafter. No. All what he worries is build Qusur in the dunya and they live the Qubur forever without building. But what is the end of result of all this? He is a miser. All his life he spends and he, he, he spends collecting wealth and counting wealth and he's not happy with anyone if someone has better wealth than him you see Abdullah he's a thief man he's a drug dealer he how did you know drug dealer otherwise how can he drive a Ferrari man I work harder than him how do you know that Allah never gave him more money than you are Sah. he works smarter not harder like Tayyip he's got more money Allah gave him Wallah Abdullah is uh, type why so, so this sick personality, the personality that hates everyone and loves itself and all what it wants is collecting money and living for here forever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said on the day of judgment, Kalla nay. No. This is not the way. You're going to find the real end in the hereafter. Layum badanna. 
What is a nabz? I'll tell you what is a nabz. Of course, in the translation of English, what do they translate it for you? Thrown. To be thrown in the fire. But the Arabic language have depth, valley of meaning. More you dig, the more you get a fountain of beautiful meaning. A nabz. There is a drink in Arabic at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, they call it an nabiz Of course, if you translate the word an nabiz to modern Arabic, modern Arabic means wine. Of course, that's not what it means. It's a modern Arabic. And there is some brother who said that Umar radiallahu anhu was given a uh, nabiz and he drank it and he said, Ni'ma sharab. He drank it and he said, what a beautiful drink. The translator, because he's, uh, I don't want to say anything rude, but he's very smart, mashallah, he translated it as he's given a drink, a wine, and he drank it. <laughs> yeah, that's Umar radiallahu anhu. If he saw it, he would have smashed the cup and smashed the person offering it. And Nabith is, ya he drink mad ada dates. You get the dates and you put it in the water and you leave it for a long time until the water changes to a different taste and also they do it with the leban with the milk you get the milk and you put special there are special dates still today the brothers there are some brothers that do it very well they get special kind of dates and they leave it in it for a few days in the fridge and then now they put it in a blender but back then they leave it until the milk changes and it tastes like date and a date it, it tastes so beautifully, it, it, it absorbs the milk. And same thing in the water. So it's called Nabith. What is it called? Nabith. So in classical Arab, Arabic, you put the dates in the water and you leave it inside a clay pot, which keep it cool. And some, this is the drink the, Arabic, the Arabs used to have, as you say, to like cordial and all of these things. That's called Nabith. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He said, لَيُنْبَذَنَّ a nabz is to throw something and leave it for a long time inside of it. That's called nabz. Or also it means in Arabic, another meaning, if I say, for example, you have a friend, Ahmed, you were close a friend, ask you, Ya Abdullah, what happened between you and Ahmed? He said, Wallahi nabzthuhu. Yani I abandoned him and I left him and khalas, I'm not even contacting him. I don't want anything to do, to do with him. That's in Arabic called what? Nabz. You put the meanings collectively then becomes what? La yumbadhanna. Al-lam, la mutta'kid. And the noon is for ta'kid. At the end of the word. So, nay, also to affirm. Alam la yumbadanna a second affirmation and noon at the end for another third affirmation. Yani three times Allah affirming that you're going to be outcast, the chucked and neglected in Al Hutama. That's the Arabic. Kalla la yumbadanna fil hutama inside the hutama. Nay, he'll be surely. I don't know you translate it. Indeed, surely, um, whatever, firmly, he'll be thrown and outcasted and neglected and abandoned in Al Hutama. Now, we're not going to translate Al Hutama because we move with the ayah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wama adaraka mal hutama. And what will make you know what is the crushing fire? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained it what as uh, uh, the translate astaghfirullah the translation said what crushing fire so wa ma adraka ma al hutama al hutam ya ikhwa get a house and light it on fire until it turns dark dark black and it and it crumbles and turned to a small hill of a black rubble, crushed, that if you were to touch the wood, it crumbles in your hand. That is called in Arabic, hutam. What is it called? Hutam. Wama adaraka mal hutama. Meaning this, 
you do not know what is the crushing fire. Tab someone would say, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah called Hutama? Of course, it crushes everything in it. Listen carefully. And this is the miracle of the Quran here. Miraculous. The words are chosen by Allah. And that's why the Quran is perfect. The Quran is talking about a person what? Who's a miser? Who's thinking he wants to live forever? And he has high hopes. He's thinking 150 years in front. But he's going to live what? 60 or 70. Sah? He's thinking what? He's going to live for 150 years. He's got big dreams. Now, al hutama come not only to crush his body, to crush his dreams. Sah? So the hutama means a fire that crushes everything, including those high hopes you had. You see the Quran or not? I can't see your faces are enlightened by this meaning. I am enlightened by this meaning. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not use the fire. He did not use Jahannam. He used the word that gives you meaning of crushing. Because it's going to crush everything you hoped for. All this wealth, مَا أَغْنَى عَنِّي مَالِيَ My wealth will never avail me. هَلَكَ عَنِّي سُلْطَانِيَ My authority that I had, it's all destroyed. Allah crushed him and he crushed his dreams and he crushed his hopes and everything is crushed in fire. You see? Yeah, he said, نَارُ اللَّهِ الْمُوْقَدَةِ The fire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is what? that is lit so it's fire Allah coupled his name with it for example if I say to you this is my let's just say I am a person who is expert in bonfires and we go camping and uh, Khalid gets up to light up a fire and it's a, such a lousy fire that it lights up a little and extinguish and pff, you spend all night puffing it. And then you see me, do you see another fire that is, mashallah, it's all lighting up and we're getting the spit ready and everything getting ready. You come near it and you want to fiddle around with the fire. I said, it's my fire. What does it mean? It's lit, lit in a professional way. You see? Yani it's exactly, if you want to have a barbecue, get a minnewi. Sah? He'll get you a fire that is 100%. A trabulsi like me, when he goes to light up a fire for a barbecue, <laughs> and you get meat that is half cooked. Sah? Medium ray. Tayyip. You get a minnewi, he gets you five minutes, the whole barbecue is lighting up, even after midnight, without even seeing anything. Sah? So here he said, the fire, who lit it? Allah Almighty. Yani how great and how severe is this fire? Narullahi mudaf wa mudaf ilayhi. Allah possesses that fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one who lit it. Al muqada lit. Narun wa quduha nasu wal hijar. Ya yuhal ladina amanu. قو أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا وقودها الناس والحجار. You who have believed to protect yourselves and your family, a fire, the fuel of it, what? Human and stones. Imagine stones is a fuel of fire. طيب نار الله الموقدة التي تطلع على ال which leaps up over the hearts. Yani it's a fire that comes. Remember, nubid in the fire. Tayyip. And it is the fire of Allah that been He Himself lit it. Then, the fire it burns, it burns, it burns until it reaches the heart. Now, the heart, some scholars said that will remain, doesn't get burned. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him a new body and the fire would reach all to the heart. Tayyib. And in another ulama, they said, no, it burns the heart all the way to the heart and that Allah give him. He doesn't die because death is forbidden on him. Allah will give him new bodies, then it burns him all the way to the heart. Why to the heart? Why Allah here mentioned the heart? Before I tell you, I tell you the mu'min, the believer in fire, if he's a asi, if he's a major sinner and Allah never forgiven him, he will go into fire. But the fire does not burn his forehead and his face. Why? Because he used to do sujood. Does not burn his hands because he used to do sujood. Does not burn his knees because he used to do sujood. Does not burn his toes because he used to do sujood. And does not burn his heart because his heart was full of tawheed. Does not burn his tongue because his tongue remembers Allah. As for this one, whose heart was sick, whose heart lived for money, his heart lived for himself, his heart had enmity and hatred, the fire burns that heart because he deserved to be burnt. That king inside of his body that ordered his limbs to do evil. As the Prophet ﷺ said, A morsel of flesh in the body. If it is corrupted, the rest of the body is corrupted. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu said, he said the heart is the king and the limbs are the soldiers. That king inside his body was a corrupted king. And that's why he deserved to be burnt. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, huh? uh, uh, Here he said, the fire is what? Mu'sada, verily it shall be closed in on them. Al-Mu'sad, Al-Babu Al-Mu'sad, which means it is locked. It is what? Locked. Can they escape Jahannam? So Allah is locking Jahannam, people inside of it. Can they escape Jahannam? No. Why would Allah want to lock the doors? And why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fi silsilatin dhar'uha, sab'oona dhira'an fasluquh. In a silsila, in a long chain, there is 70 arm, arm length. Um, as, the, uh, 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 as the companions, some of the companions and the tabi'een described it, that they put the chain from his mouth, it comes out from his backside. Tayyib. Tayyib, why Allah will put him in shackles? And why Allah puts him in Jahannam and locks Jahannam on him? They're not going to run away. Nor they go into escape from Jahannam. Because, ya ikhwah, psychologically, it is terrifying when you hear somebody locks the door on you. You notice when they do a commercial or movies about jail, after they put a sajin, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala release all asra al muslimin Amin ya Allah. When they put them in jail, they close the door and it makes a shutting noise. A noise of locks. Of course, the producer of the movie magnifies that voice for you. Why? Because it strikes fear in your heart. A psychological fear that you get. When they close the door, صح? you hear that noise, it actually increases you in misery. And the sound of locking increases you in misery. It's like when you punish your kid and you put him and said, go to your room. And he goes to your room, get out in your bed. And then you close the door and you slam the door. Of course the kid freaks out. So why? The sound of just slamming the door, it is what? It's a scary sound. That means that now you are lonely and by yourself. That means you cannot get out of here. That means you're locked inside. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after He threw them in the fire, and after He described for us that the fire is lit by Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
and after he told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, in it, he says, Inna alayhim muqsada. We also shut the door on them. Fi amadin mumaddada. Al amadil mumaddada, some scholars like Ibn Abbas and others said, Al amadi are poles. If you see the old doors of forts, they close them and there is two hooks and they put the big piece of wood to lock it. That is, fi amad. Mumadda da Ahmad is a pole, Mumadda that is sleeping on its side. Shuf subhanallah this description. Yani, you are going inside, and we are going to lock you inside, and there is no way you are coming out, and there is no hope for you anymore. You see this personality that is full of mi uh, mi uh, uh, misery, full of love for the dunya and want to just live for today and tomorrow and does not want to live for the real akhirah, the real life لا عيش إلا عيش الآخرة there is no real life except in the hereafter but this person his miser towards his family his miser towards his ummah his mind is towards everyone. And he is happy with the dunya. And he thinks that he is not going to live, he is not going to go to the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish him in the severest of punishment. Why? Because he never gave the right of Allah. By what? By loving and having this wala to his ummah, this wala to the Muslims, this wala to his brothers and sisters in Islam. Nor he had the generous personality to stop the backbiting and slander. Because remember, he is what? He is a slanderous person. You see? And ikhwani, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The issue with the slanderer and the one who backbites Yahwani. Unfortunately, it's becoming amongst us Fakehatul Majalis, the fruit of our gatherings. You don't see three, four women except one. Wallah Imam Abdullah she did and Khaldiya she did and Khulud she did and she done and Abu why all of that? And then they start what? Cursing. Ah, she is the B word and she is the S word and the C word. And the why? Ah, oh, did you know what uh, uh, M uh, such and such did? Oh, what did she do? Oh, 45 minutes on the phone. I want to know what are you talking about for 45 minutes? Two hours coming. I am Sahaya Jahil. Sorry. Two hours on the phone. What are you talking about for two hours? Two hours, what are, you, what are you saying? It amazes me that, and I'm not talking here only women, the brothers go for three hours. And that's why I always say the, there's a lecture that I once I want to make, why brothers should wear niqab. <laughs> because they're becoming like women. Backbiting and slender and bored and because they have too much time and they talk about this guy and that guy. Okay, this is for women. And even for women it's haram. صح أيحب أحدكم أن يأكل لحم أخيه ميتا فكرهتموه One of you would love to eat the flesh of his dead brother يعني imagine there is a crop uh, there is uh, the corpse of your brother in Islam you sit and you take pieces and you eat a cannonball why Cannibal, is it cannibal? That's it. Not cannibal, Allah. <laughs> cannibal. Like a cannibal. Eating the flesh of his brother in Islam. And it doesn't stop there. They move to the ulama. And the flesh of the ulama is what is poisonous. What does it mean, poisonous? And it will take you to Jahannam. Sah. Ikhwani fillah. 
watch as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said bandamina li lihyah whoever guarantees for me what's in between ma bayna lihyah between between um, your lips the yani your mustache and your beard and what's between his legs i can guarantee for him the jannah you know why because nothing burns your reward like your tongue and like the zina wal iyadu billah or whatever leads to zina man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al akhir falyaqul khayran aw liyasmut never believes in allah in the hereafter let him say good or remain silent don't talk about no one their business is not your business whether they're right or wrong allah deals with them make your point and you move on if you have a problem with someone give them nasih but when you take someone and especially the duaat when you take a da'i and you start slicing right left and center forward backward until you demolish the person what from the reward has left for you imagine the salawat in the masajid the ramadans that you fasted the zakat that you gave the hajj that you performed the umrah that you did the quran that you read halaqat al ilm that you attended you come accumulate all of that and on the day of judgment it is haba and manthura it's given to someone else why because you wouldn't refrain your tongue from talking about someone else wal ayad billah i'll leave you with that inshallah subhanakallah wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa natubu ilaik wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh